with all the recent releases and announcements of both horror movies and games, as a horror fan, we're not only... Oh, wait. Sorry. One moment. Sorry. When discussing horror, it's kind of hard not to get into character. But yeah, as I was saying, with recent releases and announcements to both horror movies and games, horror fans aren't just eating. We're feasting. For right now though, I'm gonna focus more on horror games and ones I'm really excited for. Now you won't believe the amount of followers and friends I have asking me, hey Anthony, how come you haven't been playing Evil Dead the game? Because obviously it's right up my alley, especially with Army of Darkness being one of my favorite movies of all time. Problem is, despite my love for Evil Dead as a franchise, it's not exactly my style of game that I like to play. Feel free to correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but based on all the footage that I've seen, gameplay from live streams, behind the scenes and so on, it very much looks like a combination of kind of like Dead by Daylight and Left 4 Dead where it's very much objective based, but you're kind of stuck in a kind of singular area or map where you have four survivors or players uh, going off against another player who is the ancient evil, the Kandarian demon and its many different forms. With the survivor's objective to collect all the pages of the Necronomicon to try and banish the evil as to where the person playing is the evil, their objective is ultimately to, well, you know, kill all the survivors or destroy the Necronomicon and keep them from banishing them. And it looks like a lot of fun. I'm really glad to see all the characters that they've introduced in the game, as well as the characters they're gonna be adding as DLC down the line that have already been announced. And I'm sure at one point I'm gonna get into playing it, but right now it's, it's not on the top of my list, unfortunately. A major reason for that being that I recently got my hands on the Quarry by Supermassive Games in 2K, and it's one that kind of caught me by surprise. I didn't really play a lot of the Dark Picture anthology games. They didn't seem as interesting to me as Until Dawn, which Until Dawn was just a phenomenal game in my opinion. Uh, a little tricky when it came to some of the quick time events. I've never really been good with those, as well as being able to keep still. I'm very fidgety, so even though nothing really spooked me, I sometimes would fail some of those events because apparently I just moved a little bit too much. But from what I've heard, this game is a lot more forgiving uh, and I just really like the just kind of style of survival horror that this gives you. It's a little bit different. It's more, more of a choose your own adventure with many different outcomes and potential endings. So I'm very excited to get into it. And I'll more likely be doing it as a live stream. So if you're not following me on Twitch, make sure to do so. But now that we covered some of the releases, let's look at some of the upcoming games that I'm absolutely ecstatic about. To start things off, we have the Callisto Protocol, which is the spiritual successor to Dead Space for anybody who is unaware. Uh, Dead Space as a franchise is one of my, actually is my favorite survival horror franchise out there. And it's really horrible kind of end up happening with that and the unfortunate layoffs from many people within Visceral Games by EA, which is why I will not be supporting the Dead Space remake. But with Callisto Protocol, a lot of the main people that helped develop the original Dead Space are gonna be brought back into Callisto Protocol and are gonna be working on this project. Thus why I mentioned the whole uh, spiritual successor aspect. But it looks like it took a lot of the foundation of what made Dead Space so great and just further built up upon that, as well as adding just other kind of features to it, like such as the fact that you're not only fighting against these unknown alien creatures, but you're also facing off against your surroundings. If you're not paying attention, it won't end so well for you. The trailer already has me absolutely hyped. I'm really excited to see what Striking Distance Studios is capable of, because something tells me lightning is gonna be striking twice. And although I've never played the vampire tabletop game, I have a lot of friends who have experienced it. They say it's a lot of fun. Maybe eventually I'll get into it. But I did play Vampire the Masquerade Bloodline on the PC, and that was a lot of fun. So it's no surprise that I would be excited for Part two. Production has had its ups and downs from what it seems. It was stuck in limbo for a little bit while, but it seems like Paradox Interactive is back on track, and it's definitely entitled that I'm looking forward to being a big fan of RPGs. This is a little bit less survival horror, but still very much in the vein of horror in itself. And I can't wait to get back into that world of darkness. But the one game that matches and almost exceeds the hype that I have for Callisto Protocol is Alan Wake 2. Now, although the original Alan Wake was more of a supernatural thriller than it was outright horror, but it definitely did have some scenes that very much felt like horror, uh, it was an interesting blend as far as storytelling that very much felt like it was Twin Peaks meets Twilight Zone with a little bit of sprinkle of Silent Hill. It was an excellent story, really loved playing it. I more than likely will get the remaster once I eventually get a PS5, whenever that might be. But Alan Wake 2 seems to be departing from that more 
uh, supernatural psychological thriller and diving much more deep into the horror, survival horror aspect of it. Almost in the same vein, at least from the, what the trailer kind of makes it seem like, similar to The Evil Within. And I am very excited to see where that's going to go. Remedy Entertainment absolutely delivered with the first Alan Wake. And I am already like the teaser trailer. I, I need more. I need more. And don't get me wrong. It's not like horror games have ever really disappeared. They've been popular for a while now with indie developers really kind of carrying the genre on their back. But it's nice to see it have kind of almost like a, and I hate to say it this way, but a renaissance in regards to AAA games. And, you know, they're taking the genre seriously. And yes, of course, there are other games that I'm interested in, but most of those are going to be remakes or remasters, such as the Resident Evil 4 remaster. And again, I've already touched on Dead Space remaster, which I will not be giving any money to playing it, anything like that, because I'm not supporting EA after what they did to Visceral Games, as I mentioned. But of course, thank you for hanging around for this long. I would absolutely love to hear what horror-based games that you are interested in as far as what's out right now or what is up and coming. Make sure to let me know in the comments below. Of course, no video would be complete without a little bit of self-promotion. So besides telling you to like, comment, subscribe, share, and all that other good stuff, uh, if you are a fan of horror comedy or dark comedies, definitely check out Slasher Support. For anybody not familiar with the series, Slasher Support follows the character of Belial, who is a customer support specialist and semi-retired slasher himself, who helps other slashers, whether they be famous, well-known ones, or rookies you may have never even heard of, in their day-to-day -day exploits and issues that they might have. 